What's going on there YouTube? This is Quinn, that snazzy iPhone guy, and this is the video review of HyperDoc for Macintosh. Now, ever since I started showing ScreenFlow stuff since I had installed HyperDoc, a lot of people kept asking, what is that in your dock? What, what is that application? Well, it's HyperDoc, and actually, believe it or not, it brings some Windows 7 features that are not currently in Mac OS X. Yes, Windows 7 is better at one thing than Mac. Just kidding, Windows 7 is a lot better at a lot of things, but so is Mac than Windows. So I'm not gonna get into the whole Mac PC war. If you like either platform, congratulations to you. I don't care. Uh, let's get into the system preferences. This app is available for $9.95, which for its application seems a little bit steep, but I promise after you use it for the two week free trial, you will be buying this application. It turns something, it turns the dock, which is something that I never used, into something that you cannot go without. And uh, the dock was introduced in Macintosh OS X way back in 2000 maybe, maybe even 1999. But essentially in OS 9 everything was launched through the Finder. And well, Finder has almost become obsolete. It's not because that's still where we find all the files, excuse the construction. It's still where we find all the files, it's still where we find a bunch of other stuff. But we've moved to Spotlight and we've moved to the dock. The problem is Spotlight has taken away a lot of the glory and fame of the dock and uh, Spotlight kind of you know, rules the earth. I don't like Spotlight at all, um, but a lot of people use Quicksilver. I use Alfred for my quick launching system, but I've went from to where the dock was almost a novelty to where I utilize the dock all the time, and it's all thanks to HyperDock. So, it's a preference pane item, which means it's a very low CPU, and I mean very, very low CPU. iTunes Helper, which all that does is recognize when an iPod or iPhone is plugged in takes four times more CPU than HyperDoc. HyperDoc uh, took 0.05% of my CPU. So it's basically non-existent. It's a phantom. It's not even there. And which is really awesome because you want these add-ons, but if they suck up a lot of your CPU and your computer slows down, they don't increase your, you know, work workability, your capability and workflow processes. So let's get into HyperDoc, exactly what it does and uh, the many applications. So first of all, I'm going to show you Google Chrome. Let's say I've got three windows open. On one I have uh, my Facebook page. On the other I have my YouTube homepage. And on the other, I have Google.com. Okay, so these windows are great. Sure, I can move them around and minimize them to get to the other ones, but that's honestly not the most effective way of going about things. I can also use window file or throughers. It, it just, I, it's not the best way to navigate through stuff. Well, HyperDoc, whether the, uh, the application is hidden or in the foreground, you can choose exactly which window you want. So I can say, oh, let's go to the Google window, or oh, let's go to that snazzy iPhone guy. I can even go so far as to go to other applications. So I can say, oh, Let's go to System Preferences. Oh, let's go here and back here and back here and back here. So whether there's a ton of applications or open or whether there's a ton of windows on your desktop or if you just have one, there's a lot of different applications that uh, can be used towards HyperDoc. So let's say that Chrome is closed. I want to bring up in Gadget, like I said, I would, uh, or Gadget's not open. Let's say I wanted to bring up that snazzy iPhone guy. I do it like I did before. Now, if I hold this over and levitate it for a minute, it will bring up a translucent, translucent. It will bring up a translucent preview of the application and say, this is what you're going to view. Now, let's say, oh, I don't need YouTube anymore. Rather than having to go up to the red bubble, which isn't a big deal, but rather than having to close the window from here, I can also just say on HyperDoc, all right, I don't need that open, close that. Oh, I don't need this open, close that too. So it's pretty cool and it allows for a lot of expansion. Now there's also a crap load of hotkeys that you can program and that's in this section of the preference pane uh, dock item. So I can say with the click of shift and the left click key, hide Google Chrome. Or I can say with control option command click, quit Google Chrome. So there's a lot of different you know utilities that you can use to hide and bring stuff up and bring it to the foreground. I can also create new windows so, so with shift command and click I can have as many Chrome windows as you want so it's just a very easy way of creating more uh, hotkeys in your brain and the cool thing is you can do it for any dock item or you can have a application specific hotkey so you can say when I do this do this in this application, but only do it when this application is open. So it's pretty cool. Uh, two huge features, which I love, 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 is uh, the iTunes feature and the iCal feature. Now iTunes is really great, but let's show you the iCal. Right now iCal is closed. iCal is not open. iCal is not doing anything. 
it's closed. But HyperDoc will show you, okay, these are the next two events that you have on your calendar. So I can see that today is the HyperDoc video and next time is Ricky's iPhone video, which is really cool. You can do it whether iCal is open or closed, like I stated before, which I don't open iCal a lot, only when I need to create events. And all thanks to HyperDoc here, I can see what my upcoming events, and in this case, videos are. You can also go to iTunes. Let's say I'm listening to Rodeo Rocket, my favorite royalty-free song. Well, this can be hidden or in the foreground or in the background or, you know, it doesn't matter. I can, of course, launch the window like I did before, but I can also use this little mini player. I can go to the next track or go back or pause or play. I can even rate stuff. So I can say, oh, this is a five-star song or this is a four-star song or this just sucks. This deserves zero song stars. You can also see the album artwork, the band, the title of the application, excuse me, the title of the song. It's really cool and really expandable in terms of iTunes and iCal. So like I stated before, there are the special hotkeys. There's tons of stuff you can do with appearance. You can say uh, to the millisecond when a hyperdoc activates. It does a bunch of other cool stuff. You can choose to blur the background or snap it in or have the grid layout. You can even do something so minute as drawing the triangle below the bubble. So if you can see right here, there's that little teeny triangle right here. You can click this and that triangle will go away if that's something that suits your fancy. So I mean, it's incredibly expandable. And you can also you know, choose how big you want the bubbles. You can have them gigantic or you can have them microscopic. I like them pretty small. I like them about right here. And, uh, you know, I've, I've, that's where I like them. You can also have close buttons, application names in there. You can have a bunch of other stuff. I can't go over all the features for time's sake, but it is one of the coolest applications I've ever used. HyperDoc comes with a free two-week trial. So all I can recommend to you is download the trial. There's no harm. There's no hurt in it. There's nothing that will go wrong. Uh, just install it. And, hey, if you don't like it, uninstall it. And if you do, pay 10 bucks and be the happiest man on the planet. That's all. I mean, I love it. I will never go without HyperDoc ever again. One last feature I want to show you. There's an application in the App Store called Cinch. Larry Greenberg recommended to me the an, another one, and I don't remember it. But Cinch is seven bucks, seven ninety nine, maybe even eight bucks. Uh, I think it's six ninety nine, so seven bucks. But the point is, all it does is it cinches your Windows where you choose it to. Well, HyperDoc does that as well. You can set the delay time as well. I've set it to 1.4 because I don't want to ac accidentally activate it, but if I drag up with this window, in 1.4 seconds, or at least it should, did I have that disabled? Let's try that one more time. Failure. When I drag up, in 1.4 seconds, that goes to full screen. I can pull down and it goes back to regular size. I can also drag to the side. And in 1.4 seconds, it rescales. So it's very handy. It does exactly what Cinch does for basically free, I guess, uh, because that's included in one of the many features of HyperDoc. I cannot recommend it more. It's gone from an application that when I tried the first day was, oh, this is cool, this is nice. And now I cannot live without HyperDoc. So if you don't like it the first two days, don't worry, neither did I, try it. And in two weeks, when the trial's up, I can guarantee you, you'll be pressing the PayPal button. So for those of you that can't afford a $10 application, probably stay clear of this one because I can pretty much guarantee you'll be buying it. Thanks so much for watching. This is Quinn. That's Nazi iPhone guy. HyperDog gets a 9 out of 10. It's absolutely spectacular, nearly perfect. There's a feature or two that I've come across that I didn't like and kind of got in the way, and there's a bug or two that came across. Not a lot in 1.0, but I can assume with updates it will only get better. So for right now, 9 out of 10, one of the best add-ons I think you can find for Macintosh OS X, and I cannot recommend it any more highly. Well, I could, but it'd have to be a 10. And remember, we don't give out 10s. So thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe, rate, and comment. And as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks.